Thank you for tuning in. We are Tristan and Michael, and you are listening to Fuse, Transparent Conversations for Marriage, Family, and Relationships. We invite you to join us as we discuss topics that are thought about but not talked about. So tell your friends and family to check us out and join us on social media at Fuse Marriages is our handle or email us info at FusedMarriages.com. Yes, indeed. Another yes. day, another week. Mm-hmm. Things moving along. Summer's coming to an end. Is it? Them yeah. crumb snatchers about to go back to school in a little bit here. Ooh, we. It's getting close. It's okay to say thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sometimes, you well, know. I love my kids, but listen, it's not easy. Yeah. Mm. But you love them, though. But I love them. You love them. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have something really... To me, I'm very curious mm-hmm. how we're going to go about this conversation. Yeah, should be good. So I'm, I'm going to let you introduce it because fellas might kind of think I'm I'm trying to do something yeah. if I introduce it. So let me let you take this. No, no, I, I think I think this is something. Uh, the topic of it is is it's 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 pretty interesting. In the aspect of it's something that I think men need to do more of, mm-hmm. right? And, and and if you go back and I set up just a little bit, like, you know, when you in that you in the third grade, fifth grade, and you try to, you know, you wanted you wanted to talk to that to that little girl in the classroom across the way, what did you do? In the third grade? Yeah. Thought, okay, maybe okay, yeah you what? Come on now. Yeah, you, okay, so you wrote letters. Mm-hmm. You write, Hey, you know what? Would you, you be like my me? girlfriend? Do you no, like me? Didn't do the girlfriend? Do you like me? Check yes See, now, or no. See, you, you went. You went to them private Christian schools. So they, y'all went, they, they didn't allow y'all to do that. Them nuns were not. like, "Papa, pa, pa, watch it." Not the truth, and you know it. No, it, it was just circled yes or no. Yeah. And we did. We played mash. Did you ever hear of mash? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We well, you, you know, I know, you know that's that's a girly thing right there. You know, boys didn't necessarily go. You know, with the little hand thing. With the, you know, pick one, one two, two, three, three, four, three, four, five, four, count. Five. No, 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 no. That that, that was M-A-N-S-B. definitely a female thing. Well. But you know about it. That's I do know okay. about it. I okay. do know about it. But, you know, us boys, we wrote. Okay. You know, we tried to write something to you because we couldn't speak. We didn't know how to speak you to y'all. couldn't. No, no. It is one of the funniest stories about Michael. <laughs> why you, and why I can't why tell you, the story yeah, the way that see, the story that's a, needs That's for to another be told, day, another time. But it just, Michael is at his core just kind of a, a shy, shy dude when it came to talking to the girls. In the third grade, even how so we, uh, how we that's talk. the story you know because I told you that you don't know how what I was in the third grade. That's true. Well, I hope you told me the truth. Yeah, I did, but that was just one My side of it. My experience with him was that he was a very shy dude, but he had a he had a moment of boldness when he asked brief. for my business card. Oh, okay, yeah, that's too brief. Still brief my moment number. Yeah, brief moment. Mm-hmm. But anyway, anyway, so. As you're talking about men writing letters, keep it going. No, no, no. You know, as, as young boys, we kind of, we wrote, right? We kind of said, you know, we, we necessarily couldn't speak, at least know the words to say to a young lady. We often wrote down, you know, what our thoughts were, how we felt about them. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and that, car- that did carry over a little bit when you got into high school, junior high and high school. Mm-hmm. But somewhere along the way, when you get to college and you get to adulthood, the kind of the writing aspect of like, the relationship kind of goes away a little bit, yeah. right? A little bit. Do you think it's affected by technology? It could, it could be, but I mean, but we had computers and email back then. So, I mean, yeah. it, it could have been some, a, some of us. So what we are discussing in today's topic, as you can see, we're, we're really focusing on the fellas. That's yeah, all about the fellas. So today. today's topic is the change every man needs to make. Okay. Yeah. Now this is, Every man. Michael. I, I believe that. Okay. The change go on somewhere every with this. man needs to make. So I just, I got to hear this. Okay. Yeah, so go on somewhere you with were this. talking about men writing or as boys. And then as they get older, they're no longer, they're no longer yeah, writing. We, we, so. we kind of we go away from the writing, right? Because I think the writing, it helped us really express ourselves in a way that we couldn't with words or that we couldn't share verbally with anybody else either, even outside of that direct person. So wait, so you're saying, first point, you think men need to write? No, no. The point of every, all of this, men need to write, period, more. Just okay. write. Men need to start writing. So the change every man needs to make men is need that to start writing. need to start writing. Right. Wow. Right. Of all the changes, I yeah. don't know, ladies, is watch that this. what y'all thought? Then? Yeah, watch this, how this going to okay. play out, though. Okay. Watch Hit how this going to play out. 
hit us up in the comments, you know, send us an email because that is not the change that I would have thought. So I'm curious how why you think this. So go on because you a man. Yeah, no. So, I mean, I, I start off with the whole third grade, you know, junior high, whatever, high school writing because it's like at one point in time we were doing it. Mm -hmm. A lot of us were writing men, that is. Mm -hmm. I think females, y'all often y'all write. Y'all don't y'all don't stop writing. So it's necessarily not an issue for you guys. But as men, we stop somewhere along the way. So, you know, we get busy making money, whatever, chasing this, that, and the other. And we stop writing. Okay. So I think the idea that we had it at one point in time, I think we had the ability to get back to it. So I'm providing that hope, Alexa. You know, if you're not a writer now, at one point in time, you were writing something. Okay. Can we quantify and qualify this? Because mm -hmm. one of the things that you're saying here, I feel that women are potentially more encouraged to write in our personal time. But like girls are given like mm -hmm. diaries and, you know, like, oh, write your thoughts. Here's your pretty journal. And it had like a little key and you would write in it. And, you know, your parents could still go into there and read your thoughts. Maybe none of y'all's parents did that. But, you, I mean, it was like, it was some little, little cutesy thing. I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen a boy receive a journal and encouraged to write their feelings about, you know, their experience, what they're yeah. going through in life so much so that it kind of, it almost gets almost the opposite. It's more like repress your feelings. Don't talk about how you feel. Don't talk about really what you're thinking unless it relates to something activity wise, unless yeah. it relates to a sport or um, math or something like that. It's not, and then guys that do talk about their feelings, artists, let's say, or mm -hmm. people that are encouraged to do things like creative writing in school, it's almost like they're looked at as like soft. So talk me through how how this happens, I guess, qualifying this conversation from childhood to adulthood. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great question, by the way, like how how it happens. And as it, I think it's something where, like you said, yeah, we're not necessarily nurtured that way to write to kind of get our thoughts and ideas out that way. Some people have right if you're a writer, if you're a songwriter, you're any kind of like, you know, I mean, you in that arena of life, you have a better, I guess, uh, aptitude to kind of deal with that and kind of maybe take that on. But for the most part, a lot of us men, we don't have that. We don't have we don't have that. We just don't we just don't. It's not natural for us. I say not natural. It's not taught it because okay. it could be natural. Yeah, it, it can become natural. So I don't want to say be. it's not natural. Yeah. I don't know if it should be, but I'm saying it, it, it can I think be it better. Should be natural for boys to find ways to communicate with their feelings, just like yeah. But teens, it don't have to be writing I mean, to communicate with your feelings. You don't have to be. I'm suggesting that writing could be a way for that to happen. There's other ways to communicate your feelings outside of writing. Okay. Okay. But we're saying that writing, you think this is something every man should do. Yeah. I think writing is absolutely something every man should do. And there's some definitely, I got three reasons why that, you know, okay. that I feel. And this, and this is the journey that I'm going on. Mm -hmm. So like, I think yeah. the journey that I'm going on, maybe could help somebody else of like understanding, okay, what is it doing for you? What okay. is it doing for me? What can it do for you? What can it do for your dude? What can it do for your dad? What can it do for your brother? Whoever. That what can you do as a woman to encourage him to write mm. Wait, and give have... reasons why he should write? Okay. We're going to have to get into why it's my responsibility to help you oh. write. But like, I'm curious. Uh, I want to hear mm -hmm. it. I want to hear it. Yeah. No, I do want to hear it. But I want to hear your bullet point one. Let's focus on the fellas. Because yeah, yeah. the title was every a change every man needs to make, yeah. not every change a woman needs to make to help her man make the change. But we all trying to help each other. We can go yeah. into all that. But we it, are. <laughs> but we are. I'm just feeling like that. It is coming back. No. I'm like, wait a minute. This is a boomerang. Not a boomerang. Okay. okay. That's responsibility here. Okay. Point number one then. So point number one, I think writing gives accountability, gives that person, that man accountability, right? Okay. If you write something down, I write a goal, an aspiration, you actually got something you're trying to achieve, whatever it is, you, when you write it down versus saying it or just even telling somebody, when you write it down, this holds a, a little bit more weight of accountability to you. Yeah. I was here in church. Write, write it down, write the vision, make it plain. And I think that there's something to that because yeah. I think when you you tangibly touch, you write this thing down, then it's right in front of you. It's no longer in your mind. And especially if it's something that you're having to strive for, that's going to take discipline, like not something like, hey, mm -hmm. I'm 
tomorrow morning I want to get up and go to the gym. But if it's something that might take, you know, I want to put on 25 pounds of muscle or I want to lose 15 pounds of fat, I want to get my BMI, whatever those things are, then that's something that you have to daily strive towards. So it takes a little bit more to, to kind of get that outside. Yeah, I mean, I think because us as men, we don't really have good accountability with other men, mm. right? We just don't. Mm. So the first thing you got to do, you got to at least be accountable to yourself. Okay. And how do you do that? You forget what you said, what you thought you're going to do, how you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. So like you write it down and go back and say, you know what? I didn't follow through. How can I be more accountable to myself? Mm. Right. And then hopefully that expands out to other people. But if you're not accountable to you, you definitely be accountable to nobody else. Right. It's really good. Said that too fast. Mm -mm. The words kind of flew off a little bit. Go say it again. (laughs) If you're not accountable to you, you for sure definitely are not going to be accountable to anybody else. I think that's a life principle. I think that's really good. Yeah. I think that, and I think that applies both genders and just in general, no matter what the goal is, that you have to look out. And I'm not saying this in like a look out for yourself, but I am saying you have to. Check yourself. Remember they yeah, used to say that? Absolutely. They said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah, did your... Oh, come on now. Okay. Come on so now. that's the, but gonna, it's the same principle. You have to check yourself. You have to like, hold on, Tristan. Hold on, Michael. Hold on, whomever. Yeah. I'm not doing what I said I was going to do. I need to create the disciplines and that internal motivation to get there. Because yeah. even... When you go to the gym, you say, okay, I'm going to hire a trainer. Yes, that's accountability. But you have to be, you have to decide in yourself. Some of the hardest people to work with is trying to make somebody do what you think is best for them. I'm going to tell real quick, real quick. We were watching, um, we're watching, (laughs) so we were watching this show. um, It's okay to say the name of the show, right? So we're watching this show called Orders. I don't know if anybody out there has watched it. Oh, they've seen that show. Huh. They've seen it. They've seen it. Oh, so yeah. we're watching this show um, called Hoarders. And as we're watching it, I'm watching some of the people that these um, doctors and that these um, organizers and so forth are trying to motivate to make a change. And consistently, they're saying, we're doing all this work, but if they don't decide that they want to change, it's going to go right back to mm-hmm. the way that it was before. They're going to they're gonna fill this house with stuff all over again. And I bring that up because it goes right back to what you're saying. If you don't decide that you want to be different, that right. you want to make the change, all of those external factors aren't going to matter. It has to be a you decision. And then the external is your support. They're the ones that mm-hmm. are cheering for you, but they're not the ones making you do this thing. And that comes from um, no matter what the goal is, you have to determine within yourself I'm going to do blank differently or I am going to do this for my family or for me or whatever it is. And then you have your team that's backing you up. But if you decide you ain't going to do it, man, listen, listen, it's not going to happen. It's just not because there's not enough motivation in the world that can make you do what you just don't want to do. So. That's a sidebar. So as we're talking about men being willing to open up, men being willing to to write down we're how not gonna they're open feeling. Up. Okay, open up might be the wrong word. We're not going to open up. Women need to stop saying that. Be honest with you. I okay, think, I said it was the wrong word. Well, no, you ain't got to. I'm just trying to help somebody else. I, okay, you know, go. I'm like, me, men, I guess help open us up. all, not everybody else. You can help me. Go. <laughs> open up. Open up. No, men just, we don't open up. We what just do don't. Do? We try to, I mean, even using that word or terminology. I, I see that it's a trigger. It's not necessarily a trigger. It's just not factual. Okay. Well, you know what, what I mean? Is, what is the proper terminology for what I'm trying to say? Well, I don't know if, we, I don't know if, there, if there's a female term or a connection term. It's almost like, it's hey. Like female. Well, I mean, because it's like we're trying to, under, you're trying to understand a man in like a female mindset. And that's hard. Man, woman. Yeah. Male, female. So if you get to be a man, I get to be a woman. If you get to be. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I guess I'm missing terminology. Thinking. Okay, go ahead though. Go ahead. Yeah. No. So I mean, I guess I, we're trying to we're trying to grapple with I guess what the man needs to be kind of progressing forward. Or so moving what do you forward. think that when when a woman says "open up," mm-hmm. what is it that you hear from that term? You and potentially other yeah. listeners. What does that term mean? I mean, there's exposure there, right? There's exposure of places that I haven't even really exposed myself to. Okay. So you want me to open up to something, myself, an idea, a thought, a feeling that I haven't even really processed yet. So the term open up is calling out vulnerability 
that you are not ready, not only for that other person, yeah. but you're not necessarily ready for you. Right. Mm. Right. Fellas, let us know if that is your experience. Ladies, let us know if that has been what you have also encountered in dealing with your spouse or friend or brother or dad or whomever the male in your life. Um, we are going to take a really quick break and we're going to come back and join this conversation because I need to know what it is the men need to do in their life to get to get it together. Yeah, it's writing. We didn't say it. Writing. OK, we're going to get back to point yeah. two right Let's on the other it. side of this break. Let's do it. Hey, y'all, we just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for listening. We appreciate your support. Um, so if you haven't yet, make sure that you subscribe, follow us on all social media. And oh, we have this thing that we want you to check out, FusedRadio.com. There are other broadcasters that you will hear from. You're really going to love it. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You all are so wonderful. Um, and we look forward to connecting with you more in the future. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Um, as we are talking about the change that every man needs to Mike, Michael is Mike, saying. Mike, you heard that that Texas twain came up at you. Did it? <laughs> it did. It's mm -hmm. okay, though. I love it. Uh -oh. It sounds like Whitley Gilbert. They know who that is. Anyway, about that. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, I really like her, by the <laughs> way. Um, anyway. Um, we're, so we're talking about the change that every man needs to make. And that change, Michael is asserting, is writing. So we were just talking about, hey, Ladies, I guess it's a trigger for men, and I want to hear from y'all potentially, potentially to say to tell a man to open up. That's not. Oh yeah, that might. That's yeah. a that's a. Place it might be that a trigger. Is, I take that back. It might be a trigger. It might, might be a trigger. Yeah, it might be a trigger. Because you know, I hear it all the time, and I know obviously I'm guilty of saying it. I don't know that I've said it like directly to you. You need to open yeah, up. You have. But have I? Yeah, for sure. Okay, I know I've implied for sure over the years and years and years. But you're actually. Um, the way that y'all do it, y'all might not respond to the language, but y'all are responding in action, which I actually think is an interesting um, kind of intersection of how mm -hmm. men and women relate. It's something that I enjoy studying um, and conversing about is how some of the things that we ask of you or that we say you do, but you don't do it necessarily in the way that we're asking. So like, for example, we've talked about this before, like we want you to say, I love you. And you might not say, I love you. You might take out the trash. And your action is showing yep, true enough. love, but you might not be telling me you love me all the time. And that's when you get in conversations about love languages and what your partner needs and all of that. Yeah. But I find across the board, um, again, in part and in whole, depending on which party you're talking about, men communicate, but they just don't communicate in the same language that women, again, generalization though, communicate. So we're almost we're we're having two different conversations. You're talking French, you know, we're talking Spanish and there's some overlap because we're both talking in love languages. But there's there's something that isn't quite fitting. It doesn't always mm -hmm. go. So one of the things that you're saying that can help men is men writing down um, for the point of accountability. Why else yeah. should men write? Yeah, and I mean, in this, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is about helping men, not helping nobody else. In this case, I okay. think it'll help men grow. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, then they can be the better person, the better brother, the better husband, better whatever, right? Right. Um, but yeah, so the accountability piece, because, you know, men, we just, we don't, we have a struggle with being accountable to other people, other men in particular, right? And then that helps us be accountable to ourselves. The second piece is that we need an emotional outlet, right? Mm. And writing often helps provide that right be able to not necessarily express something to anybody else but being able to write out really what's going on when you're angry when you're frustrated when you're happy when you're sad and this is something that i experienced i've experienced over the last couple of years or like when i've I'm starting to write more with a good day bad day good thoughts bad whatever it is i gotta like okay i feel better i've been able to release some of that Right. At least some of that and say, even if I don't because, like, you know, we don't talk as much as maybe some women well, some brothers may do. But that's, you know, besides the point. But like uh, and, and, and in most cases, we don't use as many words on a day in a day out basis. Yeah. So we often got to figure out to say, you know, how to get we got, we got things going on in our minds and our hearts. Right. So to be able to express that, that emotional part of it, we shouldn't be holding on to it. We have, we should we should write. We should write it down. Right. What's going on? Just day to day stuff. So I'd like to ask you a question as it relates mm -hmm. to 
athletics. Um, a lot of times that I've heard people talk about entering their boys into some sports program, basketball, football, baseball, mm -hmm. golf, soccer, whatever, it's they said, and I've heard this very term, they need an outlet. And mm -hmm. so then you can see some some guys going into sports and maybe acting out potentially acting out some of like the emotional frustration. Yeah. And then these same guys and you can see this if you look across the board, almost any sport, truly, these same guys that entered sports that were extremely aggressive or potentially got into some trouble when they were done playing, they got in trouble in life. Like they started. Yeah. Now, do you think that that's because they no longer had sports as a, a cover? I kind of almost hate to use that word. Mm -hmm. Maybe just as something that they could put that frustration and that anger in. You see some of these athletes that we hope to do well truly like we yeah. don't no ill intent none of that and, you, and you're almost disappointed when it's like man why did they do that do you think it's because they didn't have something like being able to write being like that they were almost conditioned to say hey this is how you do it and if they no longer have that then they don't have anything and that's people we see on tv yeah. but also maybe athletes that you played with, like, hey, how are you getting things out emotionally? What do you think about that? No, I think sports is a great cover for that emotional vulnerability to be able to release, you know what I mean, the highs and lows and the frustration, the anger and whatever else that life kind of brings you. Sports kind of allows you to kind of basically simulate that in that team or in that environment. Mm -hmm. And you said, like, I think you said it, right? Whenever whenever that's gone, what else, what do you have? See people go into depression, even, you know, NBA, NFL players, when they finish, they're like, man, they drop off, go into depression. The person that comes to name is Delonte West, right? Whenever, I don't know, I'm not sure it's his whole story, but the dynamics when he stopped playing, he fell off to a really pretty low place. Yeah, yeah. And we're so grateful. I don't know if you've kept up with his story, but he's doing really well now. But I just wonder, and, and I don't know if there's any, maybe you guys can tell us, um, but I don't know if there's any sort of programs that help people um, particularly men, because that's really what we're focused on, kind of figure out how to channel some of that energy post-professional play or even some college athletes. Mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of men in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s that played at one time and kind of felt lost after that. Right. They didn't really have the connection to other people like you were talking about in your first point, accountability. They right. didn't really have that there because when you're playing, you're always with these same fellas. You're, you know, you're going to play these games. You're going to practice and then you no longer play. Do you still have those kinds of relationship? Do you still yeah. get to spend that time? And then you were just kind of talking about, okay, what do I do with my emotions now? I had something that I could be like, mm -hmm. screw everything that's going on. I'm going to focus on this. Then when you don't have that thing to focus on, right. then that other stuff comes in. Like we see it um, just kind of with people, like I said, that are not necessarily playing professional sports, but just men in general, having that place where they can go and find safety. And I want to put a caveat for all the ladies right here. Please, I know that there's, potentially temptation for you to go and read his journal because now he's writing all his thoughts down that he's not telling you don't violate that that's sacred um i'm putting that here just because no. you know i've we you know we've received received questions before um when, especially when we do kind of premarital like well shouldn't he be telling me everything why mm -hmm. does he have stuff private on his computer on his phone that might be another conversation for another day but as we're talking right. about journaling Keep that his sacred space. And as he's more comfortable with him, he's going to be able. And the more he comes comfortable with himself and the more that he trusts you in the context of the relationship, the more that he's going to be able to share with you. But if you violate that trust, you will never get it back. I'm just going to put that out there. I, I think that that's accurate. But you can't violate a man in that way when he's putting down his personal thoughts and you are going and secretly reading them. So I want to as we're talking about journaling, this is for the fellas. This is something that's very private and very personal. Um, so I want to put that there. Did you have anything you want to say about that? No, no, no. I think, I mean, yeah, privacy. I mean, I think you just, I mean, most people want that kind of, you know, at least, hey, ask me if you want to read it, right? I mean, I don't know if that's a man or woman thing, but we're like, yeah, especially if a man starts writing, yeah, definitely don't try to don't cross that boundary. Mm -mm. Don't cross and that. Would you, do you think that men would be willing to share what they write? No. Okay. So you think that it's better for her to ask? No. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, don't, don't, ask, even ask. don't even don't even ask. mention don't it. Don't even mention it. If 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 because the part if a man like it's like a man asking you to you know you, he's gonna he, he got some deep thoughts he just he's not gonna share you don't I mean women don't share their deep you know what I mean y'all got some stuff written down too y'all ain't telling nobody about so 
a man t- take that times ten. You know what I mean? That ain't gonna <laughs> not gonna fly. Yeah. So I only put that there because I just want to make sure as we're encouraging men to talk, um, I can almost hear the emails and the questions like I'm not writing down. My girl is nosy. She, I have problems. I have mm-hmm. to lock my phone. I'm definitely not writing it in a journal. You know, all of that. This is something this is part of their evolution and their evolution yeah. belongs to them. And we have an evolution. All of us do a human humanity. Um, and we have some things that are deeply personal that we need to sort through and that we're we're working through. So this is part of their process. And yep. Even though we're married, even though we're linked, we're still created as individuals coming together. And part of that coming together is being able to figure out who you are in the context of this relationship. Mm -hmm. But first, who am I? What's important to me? What do I need to do so that I can be whole and come into this and make sure that I'm whole? And even if you're already married, um, it's 100, 100. It's no 50, 50 in this thing. We all the way in. So part of me being all the way in with Michael and you with your spouse is mm-hmm. letting them continue to grow as I'm able to observe and encourage who he's becoming and, and vice versa. And part of him becoming who he needs to be is him figuring some stuff out about him. And that has nothing to do with me. I just want him to be the best him because if he's the best him, we're going to be the best us because I'm going to try to be the best me too. And I hope that that's, that's the same for you. Okay. So going on to, you said you had three points. Point number three. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, I was thinking as you was talking, I was like, you know what? Cause like, I want to go back if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So like the accountability piece is really is like, so you can understand really what you're going to do mm-hmm. for you. You write it down because you're trying to figure out what are you going to do for you, mm-hmm. right? Then you start writing down for the emotional point as far as like you want to say, what are you going to say? How do you want to communicate? So the ultimate, you're trying to, you know, communicate what you're going to do, communicate what you want to say. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, okay, the third one is like, you know what, communicate what you believe and where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you alluded to it with uh, the really kind of the baseline. I think I believe in in my case and hopefully a lot of men cases, like, you know, the men are the head and we can get a whole discussion what that means, how that, how that, that flows. That is a whole discussion. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Right. Though. But, but men, but men are the head. And right. I think, you know, men are, are given the task to lead the family. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. To lead the family in a way, hopefully that it represents the entire family. Mm-hmm. I put that out there. But and how do you do that, right? And I think it, it's you, you said it in the scripture, right? Habakkuk two and two, right? And actually, may go to verse three about you know what I mean write the vision and make it plain. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you have a vision without writing it? How do you get somebody to follow you if it's not written down, if it's not documented, and you your words, you know what people forget what you say, but you can always go back and see what you wrote down, mm-hmm. and I think. We're missing that. We as men are missing that. Why our families may not be following us the way we think they, our family, our kids, whoever may not be following us how they should because we haven't written it down. Wow. We yeah. haven't made it plain. He said, write the vision and make it plain, right? And it's like, if we make, if we can write it down, it becomes plain. God can actually maneuver in that, I believe, in a d- unique way versus me just saying, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Here's what my family's going to be. Here's what my kid's going to do. Here's what I'm trying to do, create whatever this, that, and the other, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to establish really a kingdom on earth. I'm trying to, I ain't going too deep, but like, like, but I got to write that down in order to, for that to happen. Yeah. That's a really, that's a really good point. Um, actually on our first day of premarital counseling, when we are counseling couples that are looking to get married, one of the first assignments that we give them mm-hmm. is to write down their vision. Yep. Write down the vision for their family. Yep. And we go into that more in premarital counseling and marriage coaching. Um, so if you're interested, let us know, hit us up. But I think that that's critical because it gives direction. Like, can you imagine having um, a leader of a company that just comes in and be like, I don't know, you know, we're just trying to make Mm -hmm. it day to day, you know, but some people do that in their marriage Mm -hmm. or, you know, having a litera leader in, in politics. And you can't even really call them a leader if they don't have a plan. Like, what are we, what are we talking about? What are we standing on? If there, if there's no plan here, then we really just, we really just kicking it. Like we really just hanging out Yep. Um, yep. because there has to be some sort of agenda, some sort of progressive um, thought process that enables us to be in connection. Yep. Um, otherwise I'm doing my thing and you doing your thing and we just kind of hang out sometime in between. So I find that really um, interesting, really important for the man to have the accountability system, as you said, sharing that thing 
Um, and to make sure that yeah. you said with your with yourself, you're accountable to yourself when you're writing this thing down, which I think is an amazing point. And then to have that emotional outlet, yep. a place that they can go um, and kind of figure this, figure out what it is you said that they want to do. No, what it is they want to say. What they right? want to say. Yep. What it is that they want to say. And then that last piece is the head, what it is that we're going to do. Yep. Wow. 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 I think that's really critical. And I think that that's really important. Um, so fellas, let me know, let us know if this resonated with you, because basically Michael saying, fellas, y'all need to start, start writing because this, right. this is going to change your life. Hey, it's help. It's helping me. And I believe it's helping a lot of other people, men out there in particular, maybe already have started this kind of process, but like, you don't hear this being told. So, like, to me, this is something that needs to be told, right? Yeah. And, like, saying, okay, hey, how can we have better men? Start writing. Just try it. Having better men. Yeah. Last question I want to throw at yeah. you. So, are you also saying to have better men start writing? Mm -hmm. To have better boys? Because boys oh, absolutely. come in. So, we absolutely. need to encourage our young boy yeah. to write how they're feeling. Right. Just start just start, start writing. Hey, how was your day? Have them write. Maybe sometimes boys, they can't say, oh, it was good. That's right. What, what, what happened? Mm. You know what? Hey, I got pushed on the swings and, you know, my teacher made me mad. Whatever it is, it could be as simple as that. Right. As a, as a young kid to kind of like help them kind of understand, OK, this is my emotional outlet. If I can't, because otherwise they're going well, to get in fights. Right. Mm -hmm. They go run the streets, get in different circles and different stuff they shouldn't be doing because they don't have no outlet to. Anyway, we can rehash all that. But like start writing, start writing, start writing. Fathers, encourage your sons yeah. to start writing. Friends, encourage your friends to start writing. Men, encourage other men to start writing. You, encourage yourself to start writing if you're a man. That is what we are talking about today. So it. thank you all for joining us for this conversation. Please make sure that you connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. And check out our website for more content and resources. FuseMarriages.com. Let's talk about it. You're listening to Fused with Tristan and Michael.